what you'll see here is I've marked out using masking tape some pathways from the the main door of the, the static to the roadway. That's just so that people can get from the road to their caravan without getting their feet wet, etc, etc. And if the people that are staying in the caravan want to park their car next to the gravel, you know, they can step out onto, onto a path at least. So that's what I've worked on. There's one going round the corner here under the camera to the third static. Obviously one there going to the second and the first one's got a... Um, and they're 15 millimetres wide and that allows for, you know, a decent sized path for people to wander along. First thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some neat PVA and let's just coat the road. Now this has been painted with green scene textured yard filth paint. You get it on the green scene website. That's the base colour that I use for most of my scenes. It gives a wee bit of texture, it's gritty as you can hear and uh, it's good base colour for earth. So I'm just going to apply that Oh, it's not getting in the road. I could have done this when I started when I put the rectangles of gravel down, but I wasn't sure if I wanted paths. But I've been studying two or three photos of local static caravan parks. They all seem to have some sort of walkway. So I thought, well. Now, usually what I would do here is I would apply the static grass, you know, on the early stage, but this is going to be different. I've, as you can see here I've got spaces marked for trees which I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to apply the, the paths, the trees and then work out what greenery I need because as you can see there I've done the embankment and it's very rough. It's going to be more manicured grass here so I'm not, I'm going to go for two mil. It seems the shortest I can get static grasses for that. But that's in a future clip and I'll just do the last path down here as well. Now don't let this dry totally before peeling the masking tape off. We have a God's own job getting the masking tape to lift, okay, so give it a wee while after, maybe about an hour, and then lift the masking tape after you've done the gravel stage. And don't worry if you miss little bits with the PVA, that is going to be, the problem is going to be resolved when I show you one of the next steps. I'm fairly happy it's got a base on there to grip the gravel. Again, as thick as you like. Just get, make sure you cover all the bits to a certain degree. Right, there we go. Right, next stage. Let's put the glue away. What I've got is my gravel that I showed you in a previous video of the, the caravan park. All my materials that I use are listed at the beginning of the, the video. What I like to do when I do a, a how-to video on YouTube is I like to make sure people know where to get this or you know what stuff I use and hopefully they can Google it to find out where to get it. My big bugbear is when I watch a YouTube how-to video and they don't tell you exactly where they get the paint, what brand it is, you know that kind of stuff. So um, what's the problem with just telling people? So I like to give you an idea. I'm just going to sprinkle it on. It's a bit of waste at this, but if you're cute about it, you can brush up the excess on the masking tape. It's not got glue in it, but you know, I'd rather get the job done right, waste a little bit, than skimp and then make a mess of the job. So I think I'm pretty certain I've covered the, the base colour there. It's not bad. You don't want it sticking up miles, you know, protruding. I'm going to continue doing this with all of them and I'll come back to you. <coughs> right, that's me done the paths with the gravel. That's me done all three paths now, right up to the road with the, the gravel. And I've levelled it off as best I can, just scattering and checking where it, where it needs to be added and spaced out. 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spray it and seal it in place with Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement, which I'm shaking now. And what I've tend to do is decant it into one of these small pump action dispensers um, you get that out of boots right? On, in the kind of section for going on holidays you know for your wee bits and pieces for your luggage, your hand luggage so what I'm just going to basically do is check it get it pumping off the scene and then just from a I don't know 10 inches away scatter this Scenic cement on the areas until it starts to not puddle but it looks saturated and that basically is it and I do that to all three you can see it's darkened a wee bit don't worry if you go across to other things that you've done this stuff dries totally clear um, and it will not stain anything else but obviously keep it off your logos and anything that's um, non-scenic That's the gravel paths now dried and I've taken off the masking tape and as you can see they're not going anywhere. You, um, you'll see also a wee bit off the path here, there's a wee bit of overspill. I'm not bothered about that, it's going to get covered in static grass and, and ground material. But um, you can see the path coincides with the, the main door of the, the static in each case. Okay, now You'll also see that they'll get this out of the way. You'll see there's some trees being placed here. These are sea foam trees, and uh, a while ago I made these. It was actually last summer. There's a video up that I made at the time about how to make these trees out of sea foam using uh, various, um, you know, scattered materials. And uh, if you click the link at the top of the screen now, you'll then um, be able to view that video. The Trees are not glued in place just now, I just drilled a hole in the baseboard and stuck them in. The reason for that is I'm wanting to suss out what's going to be grass and what's going to be under the, the trees if you like. So if you think about it in a forest and stuff, it's not long grass under the trees because obviously it's not getting the light, therefore it's not going to be as dense, green and lush as say areas that are exposed to the sunlight and obviously more rainfall because the trees will stop a lot of the rainfall getting to the ground anyway especially in the season that I'm uh, modelling, which is summer, late summer. So I'm going to mark out with a pencil the areas I'm going to have the, the brown um, you know, earth and uh, debris basically under the trees and that will allow me to work out where to put the static grass and where to put the, the ground cover. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and then I'll apply it with my usual technique of PVA, sprinkle the scatter, seal it with some scenic cement and allow it to dry. But obviously I've got to remove the trees in order for me to do that. So I'll go ahead and do that step now and I'll be back shortly. What I've got here is I've got the PVA where the static grass is going to go and these areas here I've covered with a fine earth, fine soil and also just a, a kind of mix of slight greens just for the areas that are going to be under the tree canopy that aren't going to get a lot of sunlight and moisture to promote grass growth and there's a bit down in this corner here and just where the white areas are going that's where the two millimeter static grass is going and I'm using a static grass mix of early fall and late fall to get the kind of you know, end of summer look into the grass. It should closely resemble that when I've blended it all in with four millimeter fibers, etc. So I'm just going to ground my Nosh applicator and I'm going to slightly mask off the static grass that I've already covered. I don't want to um, do that again. And I've got the fine sieve on the end of the static grass applicator. So applying it as I have done in my previous demonstrations and get a nice covering of the grass and I'll let that settle before hoovering it up and then move on to the next. So I'll get busy with that just now and then um, I'll come back when it's finished. Right now you can see what I've done with the two millimeter static grass 
I've put the lawns down if you like and along the left hand side of the road here a wee bit of um, patchy stuff between the, the tarmac surface and the, you know, the canopy covered earthy area. And I've not taken the static grass right to the edge of the road as always would be the case, it would be slightly patchy where it's not been well kept. Contrast that to the more manicured areas around the, the static caravan pitches where obviously the, the owners of the site are uh, maintaining it a bit better but you can see there I've also got the undergrowth area that's not been covered with static grass. As you see the, the line that was the embankment to the caravan park, I've not just taken the 2mm up to the, the 6mm and then stopped. What I've done, if I can get down slightly lower, is I've kind of blended in some 4mm and waved it around. So it looks like it's kind of blending in. You're still getting that kind of ridge there as well where obviously there's a bit of tufty grass etc. But I brought the wild into the, the manicure ever so slightly. And maybe that can be better seen if I just kind of zoom down to the level here. You can see I've got some 4mm onto the 2mm onto the 6 and then obviously the 10 stop 10mm in wild grass. So that's just a go away and dry now. And then I'll add some, obviously, um, tufts of grass, underbrush, to blend it all together. The final thing I'm going to cover in this update is the areas around the, the earthed patches, which will be under the tree canopy. And what I've done is to try and make it more realistic, I've used some longer fibres and patches along the edge, as you can see there, between the closely mown areas and the wild areas under the trees and just gives it a more realistic transitional effect I feel. I've done the same around that bit and if I go around this way as you can see I've a, the transition between the short grass and the more unkept embankment grass if you like and that's just uh, six millimetre in the distance there and four millimetre and then it kind of transitions into four and two. Just the areas that are you know not used by the the holiday makers and they're not kept by the you know the, the company running the caravan park so just gives it a bit of better effect. And finally we touch there is the the gas bottles for the you know the cooker and whatnot in the static caravan and that's uh, a Backman product 44-527 picked them up on eBay. I have lots more detail to put on here in the next obviously series of videos regarding this and you see there as well I've got a bit more patches where maybe people have been playing um, and using maybe a picnic table and stuff in areas that are obviously in the wild go down to the grass level you can see the, the fibres so that's me finished with static grass the trees will be going in after I've put in some of the details around the campsite and got the, the back scenes painted so that the trees will not be fixed down until I've got all this painted in uh, adhesive back scene sourced. And obviously the back scenes to go in here again. In the next video I'll be covering lighting on the, the scene. Lighting round about say the road and lighting inside the caravan. So that's the next caravan update. And then after that it's a case of filling it with details, people, cars, and the usual things you'd see around an active caravan site.